Hello friends, this video on microbes in human welfare part 14 is brought to you by examfear.com. No more fear from exam. So now we will talk about microbes as biofertilizers. So we saw so many different applications or so many different uh, areas where microbes turn out to be useful to us. Starting from household products to industrial products to uh, biocontrol agents. So now we will see how good are they as biofertilizers. Now before we talk about biofertilizers, let us first talk about fertilizer. So what is a fertilizer? So looking at this picture, you can see that on one side, this side of the field is all empty. So there are no plants which you can see. Whereas on this side, you actually see a lot of greenery, a lot of plants. So this side it was starved because there was lack of plant food, whereas this side was nourished on phosphate and lime. So what are these phosphate and limes? So these are nothing but fertilizers. So what is a fertilizer? It is a substance which is added to enhance the fertility of the soil. So that is known as fertilizer. Now the fertilizer could be a natural fertilizer or it could be a chemical fertilizer. Now the way I was talking about insecticide and pesticide, any chemical which you add to the soil that will, I mean, solve its purpose but at the same time that will cause some harm to the plant and also to the animals which consume those plants. So here we will see that how biofertilizers are helpful. Now use of fertilizer results in higher yields and healthy plants. And that is why we use them because the productivity increases and also the plants are healthier. We do not get diseased plants. Now, there are certain disadvantages associated with chemical fertilizers. So what are they? They are toxic. The chemicals are going to be toxic. Why? Because those chemicals are meant to uh, provide resistance against the disease causing organisms. So obviously they have to be toxic. Now something which is toxic to one life form will also be toxic to all the other life forms. So now these are chemical substances. Now since it is toxic to the small insects or microorganisms, they are also toxic to the plant. They are also toxic. They, this toxicity somehow remain in the fruits and vegetables which are obtained from the plants. And when a person or an animal consumes those vegetables or fruits, they also get a bit of toxic level inside their body. So since it is toxic, so it is going to be toxic to many different life forms. Cause imbalance in soil pH. Now the soil has a particular pH. Now when excess of fertilizers or excess of chemical fertilizers are used, what happens is the pH of the soil gets disturbed. Either sometimes it becomes too acidic, sometimes it becomes too basic. So it is all messed up. Results in soil infertility. Now when the soil pH gets disturbed due to too much use of chemical fertilizers, a stage comes where instead of becoming more fertile, the soil tend to become infertile. And when the soil becomes infertile, what happens? The productivity reduces. Degrades ecosystem. The entire balance of the ecosystem also gets disturbed because due to the use of excessive chemicals, what happens is the it, it, it contributes to soil and water pollution as well. Now when it contributes to pollution, it disturbs the entire ecosystem. Plants become susceptible to many diseases. Now due to use of these chemical fertilizers, the plants are exposed to several chemicals unnecessarily. Now due to this exposure, sometimes it happens that the plants do not remain very healthy from inside and as a result, they become more prone to get diseases. So many diseases easily attack them. Fruits and vegetables have high toxic residues as I said just now since they also have at some level of toxicity in them. So when they are consumed by some other organism, that toxicity enters the body of that organism as well. Environmental pollution, of course, because use of any chemicals, that too in excessive amount will definitely cause environmental pollution. Because if you see, it is put into the soil. So definitely it is going soil pollution. When it is uh, Followed by excessive irrigation, what happens is the same soil gets washed away and as a result the water also gets polluted. So these are some of the disadvantages of using chemical fertilizers and that is why biofertilizers came into picture. 
So biofertilizers are living organisms. That is why you have the term bio before fertilizer. So these are living organisms which enrich the soil nutrient quality. So what happens here is these living, now when we were talking about biocontrol, we were talking about those living organisms which protect the plant from attack of insect pests or weeds which can cause harm to the plant. Here we are talking about those living organisms which will improve the quality of the soil. Now how can the quality of soil be improved? The soil, what does soil do for a plant? Soil stores all the essential nutrients, macronutrients as well as micronutrients which are needed for the plant's growth and development. So if we say that the soil quality has improved, that means the nutrient which, has, which was present in the soil, the quality and quantity of the nutrient has improved. So basically biofertilizers are those living organisms which will enrich the soil nutrient quality. So it will focus on enhancing the nutrient content of the soil. Now there, are, there could be various sources of biofertilizers like bacteria, fungi or cyanobacteria. All of them could act as, um, could help in increasing the nutrient quality of the soil. Now how they help in doing that, we will look at some of the examples. So let us first talk about bacteria. Now there is a symbiotic association between bacteria rhizobium and root nodules of leguminous plants. So this is a very famous example of symbiosis. So if you look at the root nodules, this is how the root nodules look like. So you can see some nodular structure here. So in these root nodules there are present is the bacteria rhizobium. Now what is the purpose of rhizobium? Rhizobium helps in fixing the atmospheric nitrogen into the soil. Now nitrogen is an essential nutrient for a plant. A plant needs nitrogen for its growth. Now the plant cannot receive nitrogen from the atmosphere because plant receives all the nutrients through its root from the soil. So the nitrogen has to be present in the soil. So there has to be somebody who will fix the atmospheric nitrogen because nitrogen is present in abundance in the atmosphere. 78% of the atmospheric composition is nitrogen. So nitrogen is present in abundance in the atmosphere but the same nitrogen needs to be fixed into the soil. So that nitrogen fixation is done by rhizobium bacteria. So it fixes the atmospheric nitrogen and that is how we can say that rhizobium acts as a biofertilizer because it is enriching the quality of the soil by adding nitrogen to the soil and that is how it will help in the growth of the plant as well. So rhizobium is a biofertilizer. So similarly, <clears throat> as I said, nitrogen is an essential nutrient for the plant. Now in a very similar way, if you talk about fungi, so there is again a symbiotic association between fungi and certain plants and this association is known as mycorrhiza. Now, now since I have already started this discussion, I just wanted to remind you that I hope you remember what is symbiosis because I have explained this quite a, a number of times in different lessons. So, but anyways, so symbiosis is nothing but a mutual relationship between two organisms where both the organisms are mutually benefited from each other. So for example, here in the first example, rhizobium benefits the plant by fixing atmospheric nitrogen into the soil. But at the same time, rhizobium also gets benefited because the rhizobium gets its nutrition from the plant. It gets a shelter for itself. In a similar way, in case of the association between fungi and some plants. There also both of them get benefited. So this is how the mycorrhiza look like. That is the fungal association. So if you see this picture depicts the root tips. The tip of the roots looks somewhat like this and here you have the fungi. So what happens here is the fungi absorb phosphorus from the soil and pass it to the plant. So it helps in absorbing the phosphorus from the soil. So that so in a way it enables the plant to receive phosphorus from the soil. So th in this way also it is enriching the uh, soil quality. How? Because now you might say that phosphorus was already present in the soil but the plant was not able to uh, receive it in the right way. So fungi actually absorb the phosphorus and passes it to the plant. 
So if you look at it from the plant's perspective, plant is getting phosphorus from the soil. And who is facilitating it? It is the fungi. So this is how fungi helps the plant. But in return, fungi also gets a shelter for itself. It gets its nutrition from the plant. So the fungi also gets benefited. So this is also a mutual uh, beneficial relationship. And that is why this is also an example of symbiosis. Now, these fungi are also resistant to pathogens, that is, they do not allow the disease-causing microorganisms to get into the plant, so that, that way it blocks them from entering into the plant. Because these fungi are present at the root tips, and the root tips are the uh, location, or they are the sites where all the nutrients get exchanged between the soil and the plant. So this facilitates better plant growth and development. Now when good things get inside the plant, so the plant will grow and also when bad things are stopped from entering into the plant, the plant will grow. So the last one is cyanobacteria. Cyanobacteria which is often called as blue-green algae. So the main purpose of cyanobacteria also is to fix atmospheric nitrogen. So cyanobacteria also add organic matter to the soil and that is how it improves the soil quality. In terms of nutrients, it adds nitrogen to the soil, it also adds organic matter to the soil. Now examples of such cyanobacteria are anivina and nostoc. So here you can see anivina, this is how it looks like. And th there are many other cyanobacteria which acts as biofertilizers. So these were some of the examples of biofertilizers and we, see, we, we saw that how living organisms can actually enrich the soil quality. Thank you. Please visit examfear.com for an easy four-step learning process absolutely free of cost. Watch video lessons, ask questions, refer notes, and take an online test. Thank you once again.